Hello everybody, my name is Brandon Hopkins. I run the Tech Cut YouTube channel and I am a Linode developer advocate. What we're gonna be doing in this video is setting up a super simple static homepage so you can easily visualize all your Docker containers, server instances, local network instances, really whatever you would like. This right here is the GitHub page for Homer, which is gonna be the application that we're gonna be using to allow us to easily do this. It's super easy to set up. We're gonna be using Docker Compose in this video and the configuration is easy as well. It's using a simple YML or YAML configuration file. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump on into the tutorial. So the really cool thing about Homer here is it is incredibly lightweight being it is a simple static website. It takes almost no system resources, so you don't even necessarily need to create a new Linode. If you already have instances up and running, you can easily add this to it with Docker. But if you don't have Linode, of course, you can use the link down below for a $100 60 day credit so you can begin trying out all the different things Linode has to offer. Over here in the marketplace, you can see there's a whole bunch of different one click web installers. We could do this through the Docker instance right here, but we're gonna be doing this in a fresh Ubuntu server with Docker Compose. So I'm just gonna to go to distributions. I'm gonna choose Ubuntu, the latest LTS version here. When you pick a region, it's better just to pick a region closest to you or closest to your target audience. Being that this is incredibly lightweight, we're just gonna go with the Nanode one gig plan. And then scroll down here, we're gonna add a label. I'm gonna call this my Homer dashboard and then give yourself a super secure complicated root password so once you've done that we could go ahead and create our linode and we will be up and running if this is going to be something that is actually hosted on the web and you're going to be doing a lot with it and running websites and stuff i do recommend you look into ssh keys as a lot of the times a password even if it's strong is not good enough i'm going to save that real quick and wait for this to provision and boot up quick tip while we're waiting we could always launch the lish console so we can see a live look of exactly what our server is doing. There we go. And once we have the local host login, that's how we know that it is ready to go ahead and actually log in through our terminal. First thing we're gonna do is go under access right here, SSH access. I'm gonna give this a quick copy, minimize this and go to a local terminal. From here, we're just going to paste that on in and SSH into our server. So hit enter. This is our first time connecting to it, so it is safe. So I'm gonna go ahead and type in yes and then type in our root password here. And once we log in, it should look like this. And the very first thing that we're gonna to want to do is set up a limited pseudo user. It's just good practice. It's not best to do everything just as root. So to do this, simply type in add user and then the username that you would like. I'm just gonna go with my name, Brandon. Here, now we're gonna set up a new password. Make sure again, it is moderately secure. This stuff, you don't have to fill this out if you do not want to. Uh, the information is correct. And now to go ahead and give this user pseudo privileges, I'm gonna type the same thing, add user, my name, and then the pseudo user group. Hit enter, it's done. And now I could just switch users here, but for now I'm gonna exit out of this terminal and then reconnect to our instance from our new limited user. So it's just SSH your username at your new IP address or whatever server you're doing this on. Hit enter, type in our password, and now we are logged in as that limited pseudo user. So now we can begin setting up our directories to install this. I like to do this in the home directory. Uh, if you're familiar with using Docker Composer, Docker, you could set this up however you would prefer. But for this, I like to go ahead and make a directory called Docker. And then let's go into that new directory we just created. And now I'm going to make a, another directory called Homer. So let's go ahead and jump into Homer. And from here, we're gonna to want to create the data directory. So again, it's just make dir data. And now we're gonna to want to create the actual Docker Compose YML file. So to do this, we could just do touch docker-compose.yml and then go ahead and hit enter. So now if we do ls, we can see our data directory as well as our Docker Compose. So now using whatever text editor you prefer, we're just gonna type in nano and then open up that Docker Compose YML we just created. And here, I'm not gonna make you type out everything. We will have links down below so you can get this right here. This is the Docker Compose configuration that we're gonna want. So I'm gonna give that a simple copy and paste that on in here. 
So under services, it's going to pull the Homer image. The container name is going to be Homer. Right here, you're going to want to change this. This is the path to your data. Now, you're going to want to change this to the username you picked, or if you're still root, make sure it goes to the proper directory. All right, I need to interject real quick. I made a moderately silly mistake by not adding the home directory in front of the data assets directory under volumes. And the reason I didn't notice is because Docker Compose actually just made this directory for me. Now, one way that you could avoid this is in the proper directory, type in PWD for print working directory. And then right here, I recommend just grabbing this just to make sure that you don't make any mistakes. And then go ahead and open up that Docker Compose once again. And you could go ahead and get rid of this entire directory here and then paste in what you copied from the print working directory. And then that should avoid any issues. For this, it's going to be Brandon, my user, and then the directories I just created. So that would be Docker, Homer, and data. So now for ports, I'm going to have this running on 8092 and 8080 for the container. To connect to it, we're going to be using 8092. And I'm not going to set up the environment now. If you are familiar with Docker and all that, you can set that up however you prefer. And then for restart, we're going to set this as unless stopped. So that way, if you do need to restart your entire Linode for whatever reason, this will automatically restart itself when you reboot. So control O to save that out. X. And if we want to just make sure we can run a cat command on that file, hit enter. And then it should look something like that. So now the base of everything is set up. Now we just need to get some prerequisites and update our system. So let's do a sudo apt update as well as a sudo apt upgrade. There we go. Hit enter, type in your password, and this will begin the update and upgrade process. And it doesn't look like there's anything to update. That's nice. So now what we're going to want to do is a sudo apt install docker dash compose and hit enter. Then it's going to list all the different prerequisites and everything. It's going to automatically install. We're going to hit enter to continue with the installation and it's just about done. So now that we have Docker compose and we are in the proper directory with the data folder and the Docker compose YML, we can launch our container. And to do this, it's just a simple Docker dash compose command and then up dash D again, make sure you're in the uh, same directory that YML is in hit enter. And of course, my mistake, we're going to want to run this as a sudo user. So sudo docker compose up dash D hit enter. And now you can see it is pulling all of the data that we're going to need downloading and it is done. So then what we could do is go back into Firefox here and we're going to get this IP address. So give that a copy. And then from there, we're going to open up a new tab, paste in our IP address. And then from there, go ahead and add the port. For this example, we used 8092 hit enter. And then this is your new Homer dashboard. This right here is just the default configuration. And the cool thing about this is to go ahead and play around and edit with the configuration file. We don't need to restart the Docker container or anything like that. We can just push changes and then refresh this page. So for example, where your actual configuration YML is, if we go ahead and CD into that data directory, and then run a list command. We can see all the different files we have in here and this config YML within the Homer data is the one that we're going to want to go ahead and edit. So to do this, we just do nano or again, whatever text editor you prefer. If that's Vim, good for you. And then the config YML. So here it is. And the cool thing about this configuration file is the layout and everything is incredibly simple. So for example, right here, we have the title subtitle. So what we can do is start editing some of this. So if I go over here, we can see demo dashboard and Homer. If I go back over here, we have our demo dashboard and Homer. So I can type something such as a tech hut. And then I could type something like Linode dashboard, go control O to save that out. And then if I go back to Firefox, refresh this, you can see the configuration changes are instant and all these elements are broken down fairly simply. So if I go over here, I can enable or disable a header right here under the theme. We have different theme options as well as configuration options to change every single color within our little static website, including the light and dark themes that are available to us. We have the optional message. So for example, right here, this is a dummy homepage demo. If I go over here, you could see that this is referring to this right here. 
So if I go over here, you can see the title, the icon, and the actual content. And all I would do is edit that through this configuration file as I would see fit. Under links, this right here is the top menu of links. So for example, let's say I want to change this one. We have another page. And let's say I wanted this to link up to my Linode cloud. So I would do Linode. And right here under icon, you could change it to really whatever you would like. If we scroll back up to the top here, you can see this link. It's a font awesome slash icons for all the different icon options you could choose from. I'm not gonna edit that right now, but to add the homepage under URL, all I would want to do is get rid of this, type in the domain I want, so cloud.linode.com, output that, go over to Firefox, refresh, and then you could see the other page changed into a Linode link. So you can add more, you could change these, change the icons, configure this as you would prefer. And down here under applications, this is where your actual bookmarks are, and you can see there are tags, and we can add different groups, categories, and things like that. So to do that, all I would do is go over here under services and then under services, you see we have a name for applications, the icon, again, you could change that to whatever you please. And then the actual items. So we have the awesome app with the logo asset right here, assets, tools, and sample PNG. If you wanted to add your own logos and whatnot, all you would do is connect to it via FTP and put in whatever PNG file into this directory right here. And to actually find that, if we go ahead and close out of this real quick, you can see right here with our last LS command, we have tools. So if I wanted to CD into there, I would just CD into tools, LS, and you could see our two sample PNG files. Again, just put whatever you want into this directory and then you can easily link to it. So I'm gonna CD, go back one, and then jump back into our configuration here. And then if I scroll down here to services, you can see we have our two default ones. You could go ahead and change those as you see fit to add more categories and more groups. All we need to do really is copy this right here under services, control C, control shift V, and that will paste in a copy. And then I could do whatever I want when it comes to my personal organization. So for example, I could do like a Linode Docker. And then let's say hypothetically, I was running a ghost instance in Docker. I would just type in ghost, link it to the proper logo. You could set a subtitle, set your tag. So I would set this as Docker for my use case. And then for the actual URL, I could set it to something like my domain, techcut.tv slash ghost. And then let's say we wanted to save this out real quick. Go back over to Firefox and give it a quick refresh. You would see the new category group right here. I have ghost with my Docker tag. If I give that a click, it's going to go ahead and take me to my site. So when it comes to actually editing this, you just repeat the process, set up as many things as you would like and as many categories as you would like. And before you know it, you'll have a really cool static homepage to manage whatever you need to manage. Now it really doesn't end there. There are other options. So if we open up our web browser here real quick and go over to Homer and I scroll down here, there's an option here for some custom services. So if I go ahead and open that up, you could see the additional things that we can add, which a lot of these will display extra information about the actual instances or services that you have connected to them. So for example, we have Pi-hole, which this will display information right on the homepage about your instance that's running. We have open weather map, Med USA, we have paperless, ping, and a couple others. Now I already went ahead and set up this little open weather map one right here for my current uh, city. So I'm gonna give that a quick copy. And then let's jump back over to our Homer dashboard. Let's just keep this under Linode Docker for simplicity at the moment. Control Shift V, paste that in there. You could see this is a uh, name weather, my location. For some reason, the location ID wasn't cooperating. I just commented it out and it worked completely fine. For this, you'll need your own API key. By the time you're seeing this, I'm gonna disable this one. It has the unit option, the actual background, so square or circle, and then the type is going to be open weather. So if I control O, save that out, go back to our Firefox web browser and to our little dashboard here, give it a quick refresh, little open weather map item right there. And then if I click on it, it's going to be a direct link to that weather for the city that I went ahead and selected. So that's about it. That is the basic configuration and setup to get Homer up and running on your very own instance of Linode. With this, you can link to whatever you want, whether that be your home network services and your local IP addresses, your Linode instances with their IP address domains, for other websites, really whatever you would like. So 
If you enjoyed this type of content and you enjoyed this video, make sure you like and you subscribe to this channel for all kinds of wonderful cloud computing content. And once again, if you want to go ahead and try this out today with a hundred dollar credit, make sure you check out the link down below. Uh, with all that, I hope you have an absolutely beautiful day and goodbye.